specialise in youth violence. So one of my roles is I'm embedded in hospitals. And when someone gets shot, gets stabbed, gets broke up, and things are going on where they need to be have where they need to have an operation, where they need to get the bullets taken out, where they need to get stitched up. While that's happening, I'm working with them and them trying to get them off the roads if they were on the roads in the first place. And if they're not on the roads and they've been victims, they're supporting them through that. And the reality is it's a sad state of affairs that my role exists. It's a sad state of affairs that my role exists where I'm helping man after they've been shot. And when you speak to a lot of them and them, sometimes they even know why they've been shot. So much trippiness is dying on where this youth beef and that you and because is youth beef and him and it's all nonsense. But because of this nonsense, I've got a job. And the reality is I shouldn't have one in this role. We should be working together, not destroying each other. So that's what that's the insight to the work that I do. I work with doctors, I work with social services, I work with um, safeguarding, I work with consultants, and I'm also a youth worker. But this thing's bigger than that now. CAMS workers. And probably a lot of men watching this would have worked with me. You might not have to do, do anything in the comments and bait up yourself. But you know, we've met in the hospital, we've met on the roads, we've met and you've asked for help. So my thing is this, I'm here, I'm going to spread a bit of the message about what I do and how we can kind of work together to stop this madness. Because the reality is, last year we had probably one of the highest teenage deaths in the last 10 years. And that's just teenage deaths. It goes up. When people go to past 20, man, they will be licked down. Things are going on. What is going on with us and how can we move forward? We need to think about it. The road is lovely until someone gets touched and we're burying someone. Think about it. An insight into your background and the reasons what made you choose the job you do. Bro, it's a good question still. I mean, for me, I'm what you call a wounded healer. And what that means is that I've gone through certain things myself and that's made me passionate about helping other people because at the end of the day the rose is the rose and it's always going to be there but if you have an experience that makes you reflect and, you, and off the back of that reflection you do something positive then that's a good thing and that's me like I've gone through certain experiences where I might not have been there today without going into too much detail I might not have been there today and that scares me you know what I mean? And you know, I'm a practicing Muslim, I say it on camera. I try to, I'm not the best, but I've tried to, you know, be a practicing Muslim. And I like to give in order to receive from, you know, Allah, God, you know what I mean? So that's another driver, you know what I mean? Why I help people, because at the end of the day, it's about spreading good on this earth and not spreading evil. Bottom line, whether people agree with me or not, that's my principles and that's why I'm passionate and that's why I'm jumping on, you know, like your channel. I'm not on BBC and going all over there because at the end of the day, Who's watching BBC? Man, am I watching this thing? So, for me, my background hasn't been the best. It hasn't been the worst. Let me not sell no one no jeans and make people think I'm, I've been in the maddest you on the road or anything like that. Far from it. But my background hasn't been the best, but it hasn't been the worst. But now I'm on a path to help, to support, to develop, and to help empower the community that I'm from. You know what I mean? Another thing that motivates me as well is the fact that it might not seem like it, but I've, I've met senior police officers senior politicians, senior doctor consultants, senior uh, youth workers, I've met senior millionaires, I've met so many different people throughout my journey and the reality is I rarely meet people in those top positions from my community, rarely see anyone that reaching high positions from say Brixton for example, don't really see it, we don't, we're not really active and for me it's about if I get an opportunity to speak to a man that comes from my bits I'm going to tell him that, Ra, look, there's more to life than just standing on the block and shot in us and, 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 and smoking weed. There's more to life than that and you can achieve so much. And we see examples in the community. So if I can be a stepping stone for man to achieve greatness, then why not? You know what I mean? So it's cold out here, so everything's running. But that's why I do what I do. You know what I mean? I'm passionate about it and I hope I inspire other people out there to get off their asses and do something. You know what I mean? It takes a village to raise a child. You know what I mean? And I'm just one man in the village. Everyone, need, everyone else needs to play their part. Whether you're holding the pen, whether you're holding the camera, whether you're teaching, whether you're a businessman, whether you're a youth worker, whether you're a whatever. Let's, play, let's all play our position and help build and not destroy. So that's why I'm out here putting in the work for what I do. What's the most horrific injury you've seen on any one person? For me, 
one of the most horrific ones I've seen is one you had half his back torn off from being run over by a bus. I think for me, that was nuts. Like all of the stuff that was coming out and whatnot, it was not easy to look at. However, the brother that was there, calm. You know what I mean? We worked, we got some work done. We got some fantastic youth work done and re-evaluated certain thought processes. But just half of his back was torn off, mad. But you have to understand, there's stuff called trauma. Now, man, I'm thinking, right, why is he going to go into all this science stuff? This science stuff is powerful. How our human condition is, how our brain functions, our body functions. So when a person goes for a major trauma, meaning a massive shock to the body, a massive incident to the body, two things happen. Your brain goes for it and your body goes for it. Your body gets healed and we can see it. So, for example, if you get a stab, a stabbing or a cut through a knife, yeah, when, the, when it starts to heal, you start to get a st uh, scab and everything there and you get stitches. So you will see the healing process. But some of the traumas that we don't address is the psychological trauma, the brain trauma, the things that happen in here. A lot of the men on the road suffer from mental health. One of the mental health conditions men suffer from is post-traumatic stress disorder. Men will get shot at, men will get rushed, men will get stabbed, whatever, things will be going on. And they go through this horrific ordeal and the man can run back. The man's having nightmares. Man will fall me like Karim having nightmares of what's happened to me. They might not tell you lot in your crowd, but they'll tell me because I've got nightmares, I can't sleep. What's going on? I keep getting mad, I'm mad sweaty, I'm mad paro. What's going on? A lot of the man them, what they do to try and bury this feeling, which makes it worse, is smoke weed. Yeah, or is drink. To try and burn, like to try and hide the pain. This stuff makes it worse. So when you see man them acting wild, you're thinking, well, my man's on this thing. No! My man's got issues he's not dealing with. A lot of the men them out there have got psychotherapists. A lot of the men them go through therapy, go through counselling. This is the stuff that you don't hear on the rap videos. That you don't see on the movies. Remember, I work in the hospital, I work in a, in a health setting. So men them are going through these things and they're getting this support. So when you see a man wilding out on the roads and you're thinking that he's putting in work and he's, you know, all this to the channel, but he's the hardest thing about, literally he's not that. Certain things here aren't correct. Does that make sense? So we need to be looking at what we're doing how, who we're following the hardest man on the road that you might think is putting in work might be the person who's got mental health issues and nine times out of ten is true and we know this for a fact because i work in the field i make the referrals enough for the men that might in and out of mosley that's the south london mental health hospital and whether you're in east london north london west london you have your equivalent of that things are going on so when we're following whoever we're following thinking this man's putting in work and the youngest especially because you lot don't recognise this. There's enough of you lot who you think, rah, this you is about this thing. He might have Asperger's, ADHD, a behaviour disorder. He might have issues in relation to his mental health. So you think that he's putting in work and he's whining out in class. No, it's mental health. I know because I work. I, I get the papers in front of me. So what are we doing? We need to start re-evaluating what's important to us. I'm a youth worker and I'm a proud youth worker. A lot of you out there may have worked with me know what I'm like, I'm just real, I give it as real as it gets. What are we doing to build each other? What are we doing to build our communities? What are we doing to build our families? There's, a, there's an African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. But the other end of the African pro proverb is, if we don't induct the young people into the village, they will burn it down to feed its warmth. That's what we've seen serious youth violence. That's what we've seen the London riots. That's what we've seen in man and guy in and out of jail. That's what we're seeing, low academic achievement. That's what we're seeing, low business achievement. But man, am I shutting food and promoting the self-destruction? Our thought process needs to be changed. And I'm asking the men out there, because it's another thing I see. When I'm with the man, I'm supporting them at the hospital bed. No dads. None. No dads out there. Don't make no pure mum, single mum, taking time off work, put, holding her son's hand. No dads. So the men out there. Where are you? What's going on? What is it that you like to just smoke weed? And where, where's the men of our community? Who's standing up and supporting our next generation? So I'm putting it out there. I'm not an artist. I'm a youth worker. I'm not a shot. I don't bang. But I'm seeing what's going on. And I'm giving you another, another angle to this atrocity that's going on out here. We've got to start fixing up as a community. Someone comes in there. They've got a wound to the stomach. They've got a wound to the face. 
they got a wound to the leg and they're from the road. After you've dealt with the wound and you start getting into the rehabilitation, do you see changing them? Do you see anyone say, you know what, forget the road now, obviously it's long, or do they just carry on going about it? Hey, what I'm saying, what you're saying there is exactly what man I'm saying. Could they realise something? That money ain't the most important thing, that the road status ain't always the most important thing, but man's life is the most important thing. When you twist up in the hospital bed, majority, I'm gonna say all, so the majority of the man that I come across that's in that bed, and they're, recu and they're recovering from their injuries, realize how valuable life is. Like some of the man that I've engaged in tears for the diet. That like it hits them like when 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 they recover that like, rock oh, could have died. Some of the man have got children, do you understand? And they when their children come to visit them, like they start when the children leave and I come back, they're in tears like raw, oh, like my daughter could have grown up rock, oh, no dad. Do you understand? So a lot of them, yes. It's like in jail, a lot of men in jail, they think that, right, oh, shit, like I should never have done the move, or I should never have done this or that. And men start thinking, and then when they come out, you come back into society, it's like, right, you forget. Hospital is very similar. You have a life-changing experience. You think that you could have lost something that's the most important thing that you ever own, your life. So like, yeah, men are more humble, but when men go outside, that's when things may change. So man might start seeing money again. Gotta start fucking around, man again if he's a man of peas or whatever or not, and stop to get the impact that that issue that that incident had. However, a lot of man it stays with them, and so, especially the man that I've got like post traumatic stress, I get those mad phone calls like Rob Karim, I can't take this thing, you know, this is mad. Like, why am I? Why can't I sleep? Why am I going through these mad flashbacks? So them man there, even though they might be doing what they're doing, it's still on their brain, and that's a good thing for me because it still allows me to have a way in and support man until you know man start living a, a life free of the roles or free of crime or free of violence and everything there so yeah man and still when they're in the hospital all day you might be thinking about you touch them and want to go ride out and all them thing there but they do value their life that like, it makes them think about in another life and some of the men that i'm engaged from the hospital stopped they say you know what this is dead i'm not on it no more know what I need, I need to get an education, I need to build myself, I need to build my people, I need to um, show love to those who are there for me when I was in my time of need. So like I said, a lot of the men don't have no dads about, but I tell you they're the mums, and they put them on from hell. Mums are crying when their sons are unconscious, that like their sisters are there. So they, when they realise who's most important to them. So they, some of the men that I've engaged, they're like, you know what, I'm going to put in work for mumsy, make mumsy proud because she went through hell. And you know what, forget all that. I need to put, I need to show her that I love her and everything there. So, this thing's real, you know what I mean? We're dealing with life and death. We're dealing with people's lives there. So, people start to reflect when it comes to this situation there. And that's a good thing. When we're out on the roads, when we're making money, when things are going on, when you're in a rave or you're drunk or you're buzzing or you're high or whatever, you're in a show or whatever. Whatever it is, you're not really thinking about life from that angle. You're not really thinking about those who are most important to you. But it's only when you're in a crisis that you realise, well, what is, what is this life really about? And a lot of some of men, you know what I mean, they might be religious, they might go and do a prayer, they might go, you know what I mean, and pick up a Bible, pick up the Quran, and you know, they start reflecting upon how how life is and how precious it is, and in one second you could lose it. So, yeah, man them do reflect. However, not everybody stops, but at least it gets man them thinking about life in a different way, which before the incident may never have happened. Young youths that are running around the roads, obviously they're carrying knives and they're thinking to themselves, you know what, I'm not no killer, but if a man disses me, I will injure him. Mm. So they're thinking like there's certain parts of the body that they can erupt in and it's going to be calm, the man will be all right. What do you say to that? That's the biggest myth I ever heard in my life. See, the body's a very delicate machine. Yeah, it's a delicate organic machine. What is that? What am I, the people think, what the frig is this you talking about? Cut a long story short. A lot of the youngest think, right, they carry a shank, no matter how big it is, if I dip a man, or if I chef a man, or if I stab a man in his bum or in his leg, he's just going to get a little injury and I can cut or whatever or not. Yeah, forget that. That is the load of rubbish. For example, one of the most serious cases of youth murders that we've seen, Damalola Taylor, stabbed in his leg. What happens if you stab someone in the, in the leg? If you catch them in their arteries, they can hemorrhage in a matter of minutes they can die very simple 
So let's not sell no one no dreams. You can carry on nank or whatever not. And if you dip a man in the wrong place in his leg or the rest of his body, if they hemorrhage, they can die. So you might not want to be a murderer. You might want to just show a man like, raw, don't ramp with me. You know, I'll leave him a little, little, little scar. Don't work like that. The moment a knife gets dipped into a man, if it touches an artery, if it touches a major vein, you could die from hemorrhaging. So keep that in your mind. And then you'll be down as a murderer. And you'll be doing life in prison. If that's what you want, I can't, I can't stop a man from doing that. But if you want better for yourself and you want to achieve, you won't stab a man nowhere. I'd rather a man put up his fist and get into a swing out with someone else. That makes more sense. But the reality is we live in a, we live in a time where they use one of this quick dip and duck. The reality is you, you could do that, but you could be a murderer. You know what I mean? And I see a lot of men getting dipped in their leg and just surviving. Man them getting dipped in their chest, just surviving. So the reality is if you carry a knife, a nank, a blade, a whatever you want to call it, a shank, just know that the moment you touch a man, you could be licking him down. Yeah, the, sometimes the knife is more dangerous than the gun. People don't understand this thing is dangerous. You know what I mean? I'm not advocating people be, you know what I mean, like moist out here and let man violate you. No, defend yourself. If someone's come to do a thing to you, defend yourself as best as possible. But what I am saying is, the impact of you carrying a knife and using it could be you serving a life sentence when all you thought to do was just run. Let me just show him that I'm not no idiot. So if you dip a man in his bum or in his leg, it's not a safe place to stab. You can make a man hemorrhage and die. Point number one. Point number two, if you carry a knife, expect the consequences that you may have to use it. And if you do use it, it goes back to point number one, you could kill a man. And then you'd be labeled as a murderer. And yeah, the block might love you for a minute or two minutes. Yeah, you just lick man down, did it. But the reality is the lifelong, implica the lifelong implications of that is not worth it and i work with a lot of people that have done certain things where they're trying to get their life back on back together and it's difficult and are struggling just to get a job just to feed their picnic and they're asking me to help them and the reality is i can't save everyone's life i can't help everyone so think before you act if you've got beef try and deal with it in the best way possible by licking the man down the long-term effects of it you're gonna feel it and all this culture that's promoting it the rappers out there you rappers out there that's talking about how big your shank is how much gun you've got how many man you burst you're creating this 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 atmosphere of destruction you need to think about your actions yes it sells yes you get youtube views yes you may start to like do do stage shows but try and pump something positive into the youth then you know what i mean start teaching the the history of music especially hip-hop not rap, hip hop, rap is something else we can get into another discussion the history was to empower and educate you know what I mean, it was urban journalism now it's urban destruction we're killing each other and then we're praising it but do we know what we're actually doing the impact of the music that we're creating the films that we're creating, the real impact you need to think about it how much men are and that might sound like an idiot but I don't care how many men are encouraging their youngest to go to university how many rappers out there are bad enough to hype up a man setting up his own business? Shout out to everybody in the end, especially Bricky, that's doing good for the community. Shout out to the artists for giving me the, 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 the airtime to, to do this thing here. Shout out to people like Judge of Souls who set up a studio and helps the youngers and put his book out. Shout out to people like you know, Terrell Lewis. Shout out to the, that you the lot. Shout out to Tracy Miller, Sawad. Shout out to people like Hash and Solomon Smith. Shout out to the people that are putting in good work for the community and leaving a good example and that's what we need to build out more of we need to build more of that and then we'll see, start seeing less you them licking each other down and less man need to carry a knife but the more we start glorifying licking each other down and violating each other then the man I'm always going to have a knife around him always going to have a shank and always going to be licking each other down so all of the man I'm out there all of the girl I'm out there that's putting in work for our community shout out to you man you know what I mean and let's, let's, do, let's do more of that and all of the man I'm out there that's destroying it I pray that, you know what I mean, we wake up and we start building it, you know what I mean? So, let's keep that in there. Give us the youngest person you've worked with. What was their injury and what was the after effects for them? The youngest person I remember working with, 12 years old, stab wound. Um, I can't remember the case in full detail, but I just remember that he was scared. Um, his mum was there. And I think it's one of the easiest sessions that I've ever had because 
of his age and the the, 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 the severity. It wasn't a severe stabbing. Does that, does that, if that makes any sense, it was a stabbing where it was just a small stab wound, but the shock of it and him being in the hospital and then the, the, him getting stitches and having to have anaesthetics like, injected into the wound and stuff of that nature was enough for him to say, you know what, whatever I was doing, which I didn't really get the ins and outs of, I'm going to stop. But he was a 12 year old, young boy, mixed race young boy, and um, yeah, I haven't heard from him since. So, what I believe. The work that we did afterwards, I think it's worked. I think he's in school and he's doing this stuff, but it's it just goes to show that young people as young as 12 are getting stabbed. I mean, I did do one of 13 year old, or 40, he was 14, he got stabbed in the back of his leg uh, a few months back. So things are going on where young, as, young people as young as 12 or 14 are getting stabbed. So it's a shame, but we do have to look up why this is happening who's the promoter of it, be, it being okay to stab someone and you know like if you are a promoter of that then just know that you've got 12 year olds 13 year olds stabbing each other and if you if you're calm with that then i can't tell you nothing but if you're not calm with that and you've got some sort of conscience then you know you, you need to start changing the culture and that's why to think about it like this if you've got a 12 year old brother or a 12 year old sister and you're out there promoting this madness they could be out there and because of the, the, the hype that you've put on the roads or the madness that you've caused on the roads you could, it could make your little brother and sister get stabbed and the reality is I've dealt with people where we've had to do um, emergency relocations because people's younger brothers and sisters are in danger because of the rubbish that they've, they've kept up their younger brothers and sisters are in danger and just to let you know if you get into a madness so say for example you go and teach someone's food or you put in a works with someone they come and deal with you and you get touched guess what if you've got younger brothers and sisters in your yard social services are on them straight away but you never knew that social services are on to your younger brothers and sisters straight away no questions asked so you've got to start thinking about what you're doing because you're not just impacting yourself but your younger brothers and sisters in your household but the youngest person i dealt with 12 year old and to be honest it wasn't the major for them in the sense of the injury but as regards for the impact in their life it was and for me it was horrific to see someone that young go through something like that and i just pray that i don't come across anyone like that again to be honest it's a strong detail for us and give us an insight onto what somebody who's been shot and stabbed has to live with after after they've been wounded what do they go through after that so there's various things from biological or the physical to the psychological um some people so for example let's say someone's just been shot shotgun or you know a handgun the bullet's gone into their stomach for example sometimes the bullet goes in and doesn't exit straight away it will ricochet in and out break some bones rip through certain arteries rip through certain internal organs so the um the senior consultant doctors will have to have like maybe a 20 hour operation 25 hour operation in order to save your life first and foremost if that happens to you you get shot or even stabbed and internal organs are being destroyed so the senior consultant doctors and nurses will be there saving your life patching you up do major operations so this isn't a small thing that's first and foremost now off the back of that you may never like some people that i've worked with they've been stabbed they can no longer do a number two they can no longer shit normally they've got a shit bag or a colostomy bag so to speak attached to their body what does that look like so what happens is your bowel some people they get stabbed around here and it injures, injures their bowel so what the um what the doctors will do is they will cut off part of their bowel and make it hang out of their of, of their of their stomach and then attach a bag to it which you at the end of you once you get on your feet will have to change that bag on a regular basis and i'm telling you i've seen the thing live where people are going <clears throat> doodling into the bag i've seen in my own eyes a you was like in the hospital you showed it to me what it looked like and it weren't the nicest thing to see and that's a victim of someone that's been stabbed so that's one thing where your bowel is put higher than coming out of your bum or up to your anus they raise it up and they put it so that it can be attached to a bag on your on your stomach that's one thing I know a man that's had a, um, without going into too much detail, erectile dysfunction. I know a man that's um, 
um, they've got stitches right the way up here um, certain people that I know they've been stabbed they've got serious nerve damage where they can't move their hands and they think that their body has not been the same again because the nerves been cut and it takes a long time for that to heal very long time so back in the day they might have been agile but because of the nerve damage they're very stiff and they've got numbness all over their body long-term pains so a lot of people are long-term painkillers that's just the physical damage them as I said we went into post-traumatic stress where people have mad psychological issues after this horrific injury that they sustain and some of them need counseling some of them need therapy so it's not as black and white as you get shot like you hear in the rap songs man get shot and they come back and bounce back or you see it in the movies no 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 for a lot of man things are going on where it's long-term injuries and lifelong injuries so my advice to the man them out there is put the gun them down put the knife them down you know what i mean i might, I might sound like a flipping hippie but let's learn to live in peace and build our communities and if you've got an issue with someone does the way you resolve it have to be by licking them down just think about that you said what's it like for the family so can you imagine a mother who's raised her son putting mad work you know what i mean so this is just there's so many different types of families out there but let's imagine this you've got a mum dad's not around so she's working hard just to support the house to pay the rent you know what i mean to make sure that the her son has got you know clothes on his back that he's going to school the son's putting in work the roles have got him now he loves the roles he's about this thing he's gassed shot in he's carrying his nank around getting to beef with you and he gets stabbed he gets rushed into the hospital mom's called in she gets that phone call your son has been stabbed da -da 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 -da. she comes into the hospital what do you think's on her mind automatically he's he's been injured but his mum's been injured as well psychologically because all she's thinking is i might lose my boy the boy that i pushed out on this earth that i've raised that i've loved that i've nurtured to the best of my ability yeah i may have made mistakes but i love this boy now he might die so she's in intensive care she can't do nothing She's standing next to the boy. All she's seeing is these strangers in blue jackets in some hospitals, in red jackets in some hospitals, with these mad hats on and a mask on, just dipping in and out of her son with knives and like, patching him up together, bare blood squirting out. And all she's doing is just, she can't do nothing, nothing at all. That's the impact that you have on the mother. Now, God, God blesses this young boy, he's not dead. But he's unconscious now and he's in recovery what does that mean up there standing by his bedside hoping that's all she can do hope that he comes comes around looking at her son with um, tubes going into his mouth tubes going into his nose tubes in his ribs to get the tube into the rib as well they have to break they have to break the rib and then stuff the tube inside one of the most painful things that i've seen happen to someone tubes in and out of man's dick man's lying in the hospital bed and all and the machines keeping him breathing what do you think is going on in her mind what do you think she's feeling and then you may have some family members like younger brothers and sisters that will come round what do you think they're how do you think they're going to react when they see that that's what happens when you want to play bad man and i don't agree with this bad man terminology but that's what happens so impact on the family is severe so that's called secondary trauma not the first trauma happens on the the victim of the uh, of the ins of the of the assault or the crime or whatever you want to call it but the secondary one is the impact it has on the loved ones that are seeing their loved one in that in that situation and it's a messed up situation messed up to the point where i've seen mothers i've had to refer mothers to counselors because they've seen this thing and they, they can't deal with it some mums are strong but a lot of mums they're like I can't deal with this psychologically they're breaking down for this for the fathers that are out there I've seen dads very few but I've seen dads in tears looking at their son in such a horrific state so the impact on the family is severe and certain young people certain people that have engaged they've realized that right that's what my family and that's made them you know what I want to so take over impact has on families is destructive and remember it doesn't leave them after you get better and you're out and about and you're all right 
it doesn't leave them it continues to impact the day they, they, they continue to have flashbacks and some of the things that go through their mind is I could have been reading about my son in a newspaper dead I could be burying my son so think about that you know what I mean the impact this thing has on families is detrimental so when men are glorifying it in the rap songs when men are glorifying this thing you know what I mean in, 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 in road movies and that the other side of this thing is that the impact it has is detrimental and it has it puts the community in a destructive state you know what I mean so just re think about the situation there man it's, it's not easy enough I, I'm working with the young people but I have to work with the families as well and certain mums can't deal with it some of them have mental breakdowns which I don't want to go into that but some mums have had mental breakdowns and I've had to refer them to local counsellors and uh, counts themselves because they can't handle this thing so yes yeah, mad it's proper mad the impact has on families destructive destructive